Tobes here, back playing some more Planet Zoo, and welcome back to Tigwadoo Zoo, my Canadian set zoo. It's episode 14. Been a little while since the last one of these, decided just to slow things down a little bit. I've been kind of beavering away behind the scenes on this one. And it's, yeah, it's a really good one. I'm really proud of this one. It's not that often that I actually kind of look at my own builds and go, yeah, I'm actually really pleased with that. I uh, decided to, as I say, decided to take a little bit longer over this one, a bit more detail. Uh, a bit more of an extensive area. It is the second part of the Japanese macaque habitat. And it's actually going back to something something I did ages ago. I did a um I did a capuchin monkey exhibit back in my tropical dome that had sort of overrunning tunnels, so little overhead tunnels that run over the top of the guests. And it's really an extension of that idea. I wanted to see, you know, kind of with the new pieces and with my having sort of learned new stuff in the game what i could do this site now so it's actually it's actually kind of links on to the arctic experience as you see here that we had that i did for the arctic foxes before so you can see me making some adjustments in there um, and it's yeah it's a it's a big old extension there so it's a large new building coming off the back of that and you'll see obviously when we do the real-time tour you'll see me kind of walk through and you'll see how it all stitches together took me a long time to work out well there was a few things that took me a long time to work out this what the building actually was going to look like so you see me there creating like a little bit of a custom texture for the building um but also just how it was all going to flow together now uh, you can see me there bringing over the bringing over the overhead runs for the for the the cacks um yeah and then there were several different <laughs> numerous different layout iterations of this building it was really boxy at one stage um, and then I kind of ended up just, yeah, adapting it a bunch of times. A fairly organically evolving thing, this. Uh, so, yeah, here's their kind of... So, if you don't know this, the Japanese macaques are really interesting. They have kind of a, you know, a, a real kind of mixed existence. Sometimes they exist up in the mountainous regions uh, where they have quite a lot of exposure into, you know, the snowy, snowy areas. But then they can also exist in quite kind of lush rainforesty areas so what we did in the in the previous episode was really that uh yeah they're kind of more temperate representation of their um their, their habitats but then this is the this is the slightly more um yeah i guess tundra tundra side of things this indoor bit is quite small there's actually three sections to this build so you have this um then you've got obviously the bit we saw in the previous episode uh, and then their actual kind of large backstage area, and we'll get into that more as you as you go through. But they're all linked together using this little network of tunnels, um, little overruns, overhead runs. Um, and I've tried to kind of work out. He seen me creating a little door. I tried to work out kind of ways to make this kind of make sense so that you could you know, keepers could shut off the separate sections. There's quite a lot of implied entrances into this habitat, so this is not an area that the keepers can technically reach but um, i'm implying that they can so yeah here's a here's an here's the first kind of i guess the first kind of major adaption to this building adding these big windows in like most things that i build in the game it's all pretty organic that definitely makes me slower than some people and as you can see there's lots and lots of cuts going on in here uh as you'll have if you've seen someone that's seen me before of your um if you're new to my channel it, it, it tends to be that most of the time you're seeing kind of a brief overview it's kind of sort of broad strokes is how i usually describe it um, in these speed builds this is not everything i'm doing obviously it's just kind of massively cut down so running the roof over now um it's a definitely a good tip to try and build your interior spaces before you put the roof on sometimes you find you can't do that as well here's a good example actually see that sort of black those sort of black bars they're supposed to be kind of implied vents so I'd created this whole kind of building set with those, put them all in. Um, and then, of course, once I put the monkeys in, into that area, uh, because of the way the game works, the monkeys could actually just kind of phase through the wall because they can climb on those those beam pieces that I've used to create that implied vent. So it was a bit of a shame because I had to go back and take all those out. But that's kind of the way the game works. And I don't, I'm never quite, kind of sure if there's a way that I can... Yeah, you know, optimize it or play in a different way. I never think I'm going to be able to do, yeah, really particularly planning 
Um, yeah, generally, I have a bit of a picture. I have a bit of a picture that's kind of, yeah, where I'm sort of starting from or what my intention is. But then it all, yeah, generally just kind of organically all comes together. So here we're putting in, you can see we're actually working on the actual kind of backstage uh, the backstage cages. A bit. It's a bit of a shame I have to have the gate. I always think that's a bit of a shame. It would be really cool if there was a null a null gate that we could have for habitat entrances because yeah it does look a bit weird having that there um, there is a trick that you can do one that I've done a bunch of times before where you sink it down into the ground but in this case it didn't work because I actually have the ground underneath this is really uneven and there was no way of me kind of working my way around that here's a nice little organic accident one of those little Bob Ross happy accident moments so I put all of that cage together and then what was happening is that because the gap between the wall and the gate there was quite small, what tended to happen is the keepers, when they were throwing the boxes in, you know, when they're returning the animal to its habitat, they were throwing it straight through the wall. It looked like it was a big enough gap, and I don't really know why they were doing it, but they just kept doing it. So I sort of decided to just, rather than refactor the whole building, to add this little extension on. I ended up making this... Um, making some sense of what that is and it being it being a way of them getting the, the monkeys in and out of the habitats there are in, interconnecting doors between each of the each of these little cages that can be you know obviously implied that they can be opened and closed this is a little like a little feeder shoot so that the keeper doesn't have to go inside with the monkeys they can just open this little door uh, and stick it through and i think we end up with like four four little cages there they obviously only really use well, they can get in all of them, but they only really use that one. Um, and then this is a this is another little another little implied thing, which is to shut the monkeys off from the different sections. Um, so this is an implied. You know, you slide that thing up, and it closes off the rest of the the rest of the area. And then there's another one that actually closes off some of the, some other parts of the of the habitat. Working on the roof now. In this this is obviously this color so I'm not gonna stay that would be somewhat garish but yeah so as you can see I've changed the line of the building quite a lot it was originally just a big square and here I am putting this roof in at this stage I have as you can see a ceiling in there and I actually ended up deciding to open some of that up uh, there's kind of no reason at this stage to have a gap between the two. I can't explain why at this stage I have got the ceiling there. So this is the section over towards the Arctic foxes. So this makes a little bit more sense. So I start trying to put these dormer windows in the top. So my original thought of this was, okay, so I know this is quite difficult to get the underside of it. The underside of a dormer that's sticking down into that roof space it's going to be quite difficult to get that perfect. I'm not sure I moved the camera underneath, but you might see it in a minute. Um, so yeah, okay, so there we go. So I'm like, okay, so I have to have that ceiling there because that under underside is never going to be is never going to be tidy. I couldn't really get for some reason I couldn't really get these as functional windows. So I ended up just kind of putting in a you know an implied window over that, so it's just a light. And so I reused that, and I think they work pretty well. So you reuse that on both sides of this building. So we've got this, this is the larger part of the building over towards the, the Arctic exhibit. And then, then I decide actually, well, it would be kind of cool. I kind of bit the bullet, decided it would be kind of cool to get some natural light into the part that's got the cages. So yeah, again, a bit of an organic redevelopment thing, iteration. So I actually doubled up. You can see the, the, the roof there is actually doubled. So I doubled up the depth of that internal space in order to, uh, or of that that roof in order to compensate for that factor. Uh, working on a bit of a yeah, I had to, these are re were really fun. So I found some pictures on the internet of some like line drawings of um, of macaques, and I copied those and painstakingly created these. These are actually up on the workshop. Uh, and so just doing yeah just was kind of looking for some ways to making the kind of education bits a bit more interesting uh, so yeah creating this little creating this little kind of line art thing I think he turns out all right so there's a, I think there's four of these in the end so this is supposed to be a little bit of education area about the fact that they you know in the jungle and then 
would be there. So I need some foliage details and a few bits and pieces. Mainly just because this this is pretty much just a route from as you can see that no access door on the on the left hand side there. This is pretty much all just access into the backstage area. So I wanted something just to dress this up a bit. Using one of Citroen Vert's fonts. Uh, if you don't know about the fonts on the workshop guys, they are absolutely a godsend. Uh, this is one of the smaller ones, but there's you know there's large ones. There's, it would be lovely to get some um, some more options for fonts from the signs, I think, because the because the font type doesn't doesn't just doesn't really ever feel right. Always feels a bit kind of um, I don't know. It just never looks really particularly sharp. So a little education thing. This is supposed to just be a thing about you know monkeys evolved brains and that sort of stuff. Uh, didn't do a lot with this to be honest just created this little brain trying to create this little brain it was you have to let me know what you think does this look like it could be a brain i think adding this little bit of shading helped make a difference but yeah it's always i always quite like these little bits the education bits are always kind of fun these little bits around the habitats that um yeah just their little little opportunities for creativity really and creative creative expression so I didn't, yeah, I did a bit of text in. So this is just supposed to be sort of saying about how, you know, the monkeys' brains are that much more evolved than, than other animals, etc., and then closer to our sort of brain. So a bit of text, and then the second one, pushing this on, and just yeah, just nice to have some detail really, just to just to create these. Um, I, I think I've added these to the workshop. I can't remember, guys. Generally, there's always a bit of a collection of stuff that goes up on the workshop. If there's something that you see that i haven't uploaded to the workshop then feel free to drop me a comment uh, either over on steam or on uh, on the video here would be would be great yeah i'm always happy to do that so yeah there's a second one added in there because as you said as i said you'll see all this in more detail in the real time tour so i did change the floor out put some more education boards in kind of tying it together with the the previous arctic section put some doormats down and yeah, as ever, there's a bunch of things you haven't kind of seen. There's another door on the right there that we'll see when we do the real time tour. So really looking forward to looking forward to seeing what you guys think of this one. Uh, and I will leave you with the last little bit of the speed build here, just doing some decorative foliage work outside. But yeah, I'll be back back any minute, guys, with the real time tour. Okay, welcome back. So we're starting at the top of the steps, just to give you that view of the profile and stuff there so i think that's worked out pretty well because it's pretty much following the same profile as the the net that we put up in the previous one I'm trying to keep the focal point of the waterfall down there clear there is going to be a bunch of stuff here obviously but so but yeah so we might lose some of that but i'd like to keep it as much of that just a little bit of a view down there clear so let's head on down. So yeah, I thought I'd start from up here because obviously this is all part of the same habitat that we added in the last episode. I'm really happy with this one. I think I sort of said before it's, oh, you're late. I've closed the park. Come on, Siggy Rook. You're not supposed to be here. Yep, the last bus is leaving. Off you go. So yeah, I'm really happy with this one. I think this is probably, probably as an overall habitat, this is my favourite habitat I've built in the game so far. I think it's just fun because it's got like loads of really kind of diverse sections. I love the fact that they spend quite a lot of time up here. It feels like for a for a habitat, it's yeah, it's pre probably pretty entertaining for the guests because obviously the guests get to see them in all sorts of different places. But then also for the for the monkeys themselves, although this one looks a little bit forlorn, doesn't it? Suddenly staring out of the world. So let's head on down the slope. So there's the building. There's the, the first part of the building, the backdrop. Um next to the next to the Arctic foxes. So we're supposed to go through there. We're actually gonna do this in reverse order though, because I think it just kind of makes sense from a kind of touring point of view, because you've seen the stuff that's through there. So if we make our way around here. So this is the first view you get of the of the tunnels themselves so i think these have turned out really good um a little trick that i did because i don't the animals don't tend to dwell up there for very long we've got one just sort of chilling over there but hopefully we'll see a few running across in a second um a little trick that i did was i put i actually hid a vista point a little trick you can do with the vista points is hide a 
hide the little post somewhere. Hide the little post somewhere and then target something like just, a, you know, an object or whatever. And then you'll end up getting, you'll get the guests kind of standing and looking. I wonder where they all are. They're usually all charging over. <laughs> They're always just charging over. But yeah, as I said, so they've got lots of different little areas they can sit in. There's one just chilling there. Might just be that sometimes it's um, it's not updated. So there is a bit of a thing. Sometimes you obviously just the way the game works. Occasionally you'll get one of them just kind of phase through. They'll just come floating across. Um, and I did also put this up on the workshop. The overall habitat as a whole thing. Oh, there we go. There's one going through. The overall habitat as a whole thing, I think, is just too. Is a little bit difficult to get up on the workshop. So what I've done is uploaded things like this. Um, obviously, eventually the whole park will be up on the workshop. But yeah, I did go through a stage where there were monkeys on the roof. So I thought this was a nice... These little... Scattered a couple of these little statues around. I thought that was kind of a nice little reference to that. So I said, we're supposed to go through there. I'm actually just going to show you this first. So I'll bring you around this way. Um, and I'll just take you through this little gate. In fact, let's just go around to the side of this. We'll just step around the side of this for a second. So this is that bit that I was saying in the speed build that I'd kind of capitalized on that happy happy little accident that happened um, and decided to add this in as like a little access gate. So this is supposed to be how they, you know, they get the monkeys in and out of the habitat if they have to get them out using a vehicle or something. Uh, they open that. So I did all my guttering. I did some some little tanks and stuff in so if they want to use that for watering plants and things uh, obviously the downstairs the lower section isn't done at the moment um, not quite sure exactly what it's going to be yet but there'll be a path running through the bottom of this this building so let's come back on round and we'll go through the door it's lovely and peaceful when there's no guests in Surprised there's not more monkeys. That guy still seems to be just chilling out. I'm wondering if it's having a little bit of a glitch. We shall see. So yeah, I said this was this is all this is all kind of education area. Uh, I need to fix that path and get the guests to go and the staff to go through that door a bit more. Pretty happy with the way this turned out. So I said these these little monkeys themselves would be up on the workshop. And they do path their way path their way backwards and forwards. I wonder if they're all just kind of sitting in here. I wonder why they're all sitting in here. Maybe it's because they've just been fed. They are. Most of them all just sit in here. So that looks a lot like... That looks a lot like the game. I'm having a little bit of a freak out. So I did some vents and stuff in here. I really am I'm glad that I took the time to make that that open I think that makes such a difference to the it felt a bit claustrophobic in here before um, and as I said they do they have got access when they're not all kind of slightly dazed and standing around they have all got access to all the different parts of the of this uh, obviously all implied and they don't actually have a reason to do that but yeah I'm wondering what's going on in there they're all just it'll refresh at some point what tends to happen, I've not been noticing that what tends to happen is that one of them will come over and in doing that it will kind of update the path through for everyone for some reason. Let's get that Teddy Camps deselected. So we'll go we'll go through this door because you guys haven't seen this backstage area. Hopefully we don't have a bit of the roof. So this is another little kind of working working area. Some feed and stuff little food prep table that door there goes through into the tundra section which we'll go around and see now again all completely implied yeah and i think these worked out all right these worked out okay they did again they're not really i didn't really think them through very much just kind of did it so that's another one of these supposed to be another one of these kind of cold doors um not doors but they're like material like plastic kind of drape things so yeah, two more of those. Yeah, they're all just slightly... Oh, there you go. There's one. 
<laughs> there's one moonwalking his way across. So as I said, this is this is supposed to be their kind of tundra section. Strange. Maybe they're all like they've all been sniffing on something. I don't know what's going on. They're all slightly dazed. So yeah, then I did in a little. This is supposed to, a nice little viewpoint again. Not quite sure what's going to be ending up down here, but thought I'd play on this kind of Arctic theme. Uh, and then there's the other door that was on the other side of that. Um, and then I did in a lift because I thought, well, there's, you know, what am I going to do with this space? Ended up added in this sort of implied lift slash elevator, uh, which goes down to the lower area so that people with disabilities, etc., can get through. And then this comes back to where we saw in the last episode. So this comes back to the the Arctic foxes. Yeah, everybody seems to be in a strange state of strange state of confusion. I wonder what's going on. Yeah, they all look like there's maybe it's the weather. Maybe something with the moon or something, I don't know. So that's that one guys. Very much appreciate you all watching. Oh like just as I just as I come out of Teddy Cam, look. They're suddenly all running about. Yeah, there's some running about. <laughs> just to show it does actually work. So thank you very much for watching. Do very much appreciate it. Super excited. If you haven't already found out, then there's a Europe update next week if you're watching this around about the time that I'm putting this out. And so I'll be, hopefully, pretty soon, putting out the next episode on Tickle Day. My name is Toves. Do not forget to like and subscribe. And I will catch you on the next one. Take it easy.